Hey everyone, Creepy Otter here, and originally I did a script for this original part to make sure I got in, but I feel like I wasn't getting my feelings through properly, so I'm just kind of winging it. Um, sorry I haven't been around for three months. I was really, really bad with my mental health. I needed to, uh, some time for a break, really, and kind of think about things and all that stuff, spend time with the family... I also moved my uh, desk around, so I'm now in, in, I'm in a different room where it's more quiet, more chill, so I don't have to be rushed on making my content. And you know what? It's worked. I, I sorted out my mental health. I feel way more relaxed where I am now, as also I was experiencing burnout, so I had to take a step back and just think, like like why I was experiencing burnout and I think it's just because I was rushing myself and not enjoying doing the content as much as for example I am now so instead of me thinking I have to get content out now it's just I do it because I enjoy it and instead of rushing myself you know even you know I wasn't doing seven videos a week you know but in my mind I was still thinking that so I so now I've took the back and now like max two videos a week minimum one video you might get free if I enjoy that's the thing I have to enjoy it um yeah so it's really just you know the reason why I say one or two videos is just to slowly ease myself back into the content creation and not overloading my brain so that means we will be having longer videos as well. Like I want to concentrate on the quality more than the quantity. So and to me, uh, quality is longer videos. So I can sit, sit there looking at my editing software and just experiment really. And that's what I want to do. I want to be experimenting to the point where I can get my videos that professional quality in my head. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. There will be no Dr. Richardson for this video as I want to. I will be doing a poll on my YouTube to whether everybody likes Dr. Richardson, like the little bit beforehand, or if I should just read the SCP as it is. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, sorry for the long wait. I am back 110%. So yeah, I really look forward to recording now, and it will stay that way. So yeah, enjoy the SCP. Item number, SCP-7975. Restriction level, level three, confidential. Containment class, safe. Disruption Class VLAM Risk Class Notice Assigned Site Site 78 Site Director Leah Richter Research Head Reginald Whitlock Assigned Task Force Gamma 4 Green Stags Special Containment Procedures SCP-7975 is to be kept within a temperature controlled containment chamber designed after a reptilian slash amphibian habitat. SCP-7975's daily diet shall consist of three Stalfers TV dinners and a pound of fried flies. In addition, they are allowed one pack of menthol cigarettes per week, one lawn chair and one 4K smart TV with cable access are to be given for recreational purposes. Foundation web crawlers are to respond to postings of pictures and videos of SCP-7975 to discredit them as hoaxes, men in costumes, or iguanas. Any direct witnesses to SCP-7975's activity are to be questioned and amnesticized. Description SCP-7975 is the designation given to an amphibious biped resembling a member of Pseudacris maculata, Boreal Chorus Frog. SCP-7975 stands 1.7 meters tall and weighs 
55 kilograms. Its appearance resembles that of a frog with limb proportions similar to that of a human being. SCP-7975's internal biology resembles a non-anomalous frog, but scaled up to match its current size. Unlike its amphibian cousins, SCP-7975 displays an intense desire for frozen human foods, such as TV dinners and pizzas, often resorting to theft from local supermarkets to satisfy this craving. SCP-7975 also displays a propensity for speech, speaking in a Midwestern accent, despite it not having the proper vocal apparatus to do so. SCP-7975 is believed to be responsible for the myth of the Chugwater Frogman, a creature designated as a cryptid by Wyoming inhabitants and forming a part of the local folklore. SCP-7975 claims to be only 26 years old, contradicting the earliest sighting. At this time, it is unknown if there are multiple instances of SCP-7975, or if SCP-7975 is simply misremembering its own age. History The Chugwater Frogman was first believed to have been spotted in 1970 by a man named Chuck Winchester on a road leading out of Chugwater, Wyoming. Chuck claims to have spoken with the frogman, who was trying to catch insects by a lamp post, and offered them a cigarette before leaving them be. Chuck's story quickly spread throughout the small town and became a local legend, prompting businesses and tourism industries to take advantage and sell merchandise and offer a chance to potentially see the mysterious frogman. Despite attention from cryptid hunters in state and out of state, sightings were very rare, with only three per year, low enough to the point where Foundation cryptozoologists deemed the sightings to be nothing more than a hoax. Discovery In 2022, Foundation Site 78 had developed a hypothesis that the world was experiencing a surge of activity in its cryptobiome the sum total of all anomalous animals, believed to be connected to a greater anomalous event. This anomalous event is linked to the ninth world. This increase in activity was marked by a growth in populations of parafauna and more discoveries of new species in the past 10 years. In addition, sightings of SCP-7975 became more frequent and increasingly public. Site-78's newly established Cryptozoology Department, an extension of Site-44's Cryptozoology Division, under Dr. Whitlock, began investigating these new sightings. From pictures and videos being posted online, Dr. Whitlock theorised that SCP-7975 was not a hoax or a myth, but rather a new species of parafauna. A list of documented sightings can be found below. Date, 12th of the 1st, 2022. Details, at 1am, Kimberly Montoya, age 35, owner of a local CVS, came out from her office to find SCP-7975 stealing menthol cigarettes and gum from behind the register. Montoya proceeded to call the authorities and chase SCP-7975 from the store. SCP-7975 had left the premises by the time the police arrived, and subsequent inventory of the store had shown that SCP-7975 had stolen several TV dinners as well. The incident was caught on the security cameras, but Foundation personnel in the area were able to scrub the footage, and Montoya was subsequently amnesticized. Date, 19th of the 2nd, 2022. SCP-7975 was recorded at Chugwater Strip Club with at least $4,000 in US singles. When questioned, SCP-7975 answered that it had obtained the money from a suitcase that had floated downriver. SCP-7975 then proceeded to order as many dances as possible and was recorded on phone video by several customers. 
The female dancers interviewed by Foundation personnel stated that SCP-7975 was their best customer and noted that he kept requesting that they throw that ass back, froggy style. They didn't quite understand this request, but proceeded to act like frogs for him as long as he would pay. SCP-7975 left the establishment after spending all of the money. All patrons were later amnesticized. Date, 28th of the 4th, 2025. SCP-7975 appeared on a Snapchat video taken by Andrew Kino, age 21, in the break room of a weed dispensary. SCP-7975 was visibly inebriated and talking philosophically about his anomalous nature as a frogman. Foundation web crawlers subsequently had the story taken down, and the workers of the dispensary were amnesticized. On June 8, 2022, cryptozoological investigators were able to triangulate the location of SCP-7975's home by cross-referencing previous sightings with large sources of water and caves where he could potentially be hiding. MTF Gamma 4 was deployed with tranquilizers and net guns to five different cave systems, eventually finding one with a lake inside of it and several amenities nearby. These included a generator, mini fridge, microwave, television, cigarettes and a lawn chair. SCP-7975 came up from the water moments after MTF Gamma 4's arrival and was verbally hostile to the MTF, who attempted to reason with the anomaly to come with them. SCP-7975 refused and brandished a Glock 17 at the MTF, who subsequently tranquilized and netted it after SCP-7975's Glock misfired. SCP-7975 was then detained in the Cryptozoological Department's Amphibium Wing, with amenities provided after SCP-7975 showed a willingness to cooperate with research staff. Addendum 7975.1 Interview with SCP-7975 The following interview was performed by Dr. Whitlock and supervised by researcher Maria Johnston of Parabiological Sciences, as this was Dr. Whitlock's first anomaly contained at Site-78. Site Director Richter requested an observer be present to see how he handled sentient anomalies. Stating my name for the record, Maria Johnston, Head of Parabiological Sciences and Arms plus Equipment. With me today is the Head of Cryptozoology, Dr. Reginald. Excuse me, Miss Johnston. I'd like to be referred on the record as Reggie. What? Standard Site 78 protocol for video logs is that you have to say your preferred name. All right, I guess that's okay. Thank you for the respect, young lady. Now, SCP-7975. I'm sure this has been a bit of a harrowing experience for you being ripped from your home. You kidding? This place is so much better than the dank cave. If I knew this was a hotel, I wouldn't have pulled a gun on you. 7975, this isn't a hotel. You are in containment, like a zoo, but without the people. You aren't allowed to leave. Well, you're going to keep me fed and taken care of, right? You know, I think you're right, not a hotel. More like my own palace. That's not... What Johnston was trying to say, my friend, is that if you would like us to enrich your habitat, there needs to be a bit of give and take. You answer our questions, and we'll see if we can get you some TV dinners. I understand that the usual frog food isn't enough. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to maintain a physique like this without any big protein? What do you want to know? SCP-7975 attempts to flex its abs, but nothing shows through its blubbery gut. How old are you? 26, I think. That might be in frog years, not sure. According to our records, you've been around for 46 years. There's about a 20-year gap there. 46? Do I like 46? You might have the wrong guy. Are there more like you? Where are your parents? 
Do you have siblings? Nope. No family. I'm the only one of me there is. But someone had to lay your egg. Were you ever a tadpole? Not that I remember. I've always just been a guy. They call me the Chugwater Frogman, but you can call me Gary. Gary. Hmm. Moving on. Did you perhaps fall into a temporal sink between now and 1970? Perhaps there was a reality shift? Or a cosmic realignment? Why did your activity seem to increase now? Doctor. Reggie. No titles. Reggie. What does any of that have to do with... What the hell are you talking about, Doc? Time sink? Next you're going to start talking about Bigfoot hemorrhoids. This footnote links to a YouTube video where they discuss that Bigfoot has hemorrhoids due to a clip, I think. But to tell you the truth, I used to hibernate a lot. Then suddenly, it just became in season for me. I just felt the need to start coming out of the cave more recently. Hmm, that does confirm your theory, Johnston. I wonder if Jersey Devils follow a similar behaviour. I'm also inclined to ask, 7975, where did you acquire a gun? Where every American gets one. Are you going to answer? The dumpster. Don't you get your firearms from the local dumpster? No, that's actually quite concerning. I personally want to know more about that briefcase you mentioned. It wouldn't happen to belong to D.B. Cooper, would it? D.B., my pal. Yeah, I pulled him out of the river and he gave me some money for my trouble. I kept it stashed for a special occasion. I knew it. I knew he was out there somewhere. SCP-7975, you have to tell us about everything that the government might be hiding from us. Is there anything else strange happening in Chugwater? Hmm... SCP-7975 pauses for a moment. Did you guys know that the local Wendy's is run by alligators? End recording. And that's it for this SCP. I would like to thank SYTYC Fanon, short for So You Think You Can Fanon, for this SCP. Go check them out in the description below. Uh, also, I'd like to thank our Kofi members, Pro Re Natura, Dilly Guff, and Quasi Crafter, for their generosity in providing me a little bit of financial support. It really means a lot that you still choose to support me. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'll put that poll out on YouTube to see whether you still like would like to have Dr. Richardson in there or not. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.